This is Botanica Real, another quick video about a, a tree that I have. And in this case, last time I did a video of the best tree that I own. Now I'm gonna talk about uh, one of the worst trees that I own. Um, it's a great tree, but it, it is a, a big, big hassle. That's right, we're talking about the, my citrus tree. I know it's gonna ruffle some feathers, but for zone 8A, I would not recommend it. Um, more than likely, you're gonna get ants on it. If you see ants, that means you have scale. And to put in simple terms, scale is basically like lice for plants, for citrus plants specifically. And they are hard to get rid of. You basically have to learn to live with them. Um, you can spray neem oil and other things, or you could try, you know, sprays. Uh, chemical sprays, but you know, it depends if you you, you know, you want to put chemicals in it. If you're gonna eat it, I wouldn't recommend it um, The way you take off scale is by either scraping them off or you know, like I said with some type of spray But you have to be on it all the time um, They're easy to spot. They're easy to take off, but it's just a pain um, So if you see ants more likely you have scale another reason why it's it's a pain is because it's not cold tolerant uh, here in, in the North Texas area, it gets um, way below 50. And last year, it got down to negative 2. And if it gets below 50, you have to bring them in. And if you notice, I have it in a, in a, in a plastic container because I have to carry it into the house basically three or four months of the year and then I have to take it back out. So if you're going to get a tree like this, we have to bring it in and out. Make sure you have it in a light container. Once inside your house, uh, the humidity is going to affect it. Make sure it's not close to, uh, like... A heater um, you have to put it close enough for window for it to get enough light but far away to where the cold from the window doesn't affect it it's very um, sensitive to temperature and moisture so you're gonna have to probably spray it just to make sure it makes it through the winter and I wouldn't take it out till you know till you see that that we're good with spring um, you know make sure that it, there's not a frost or something like that because it will definitely uh, negatively affect this tree if you're okay with the, you know, dealing with all the hassles that it has, it does have a lot of positives. For example, it's, it smells really good, especially when the, the little flowers are blooming. Um, you can make tea out of it. You can use a fruit. The color is really dark. Uh, right here, you can see one of the little flowers. The flowers look pretty amazing too. You take pictures of it. Um, it's a really nice looking tree. If it wasn't for all the negatives, you know, um, it supposedly is from zone 8 to 11, but I would say more it's a zone, you know, probably 9 to 11. It is a uh, self-pollinating tree. So the good thing is if you buy one and if you buy real small in a couple of years or in a year, you'll have fruit. So that's pretty nice. Um, you know, it's really dark green. You could grab the leaves like this and, you know, just mush them and, you know, it'll leave a really nice fragrance. Uh, I remember when I when I was uh, young and we were in Mexico, my grandma would get um, she would make tea out of this tr this tree and you know not even the lemons it would just use the leaves and we just put some sugar and with this um, white bread that we call bolillo and it tastes uh, I mean it was good enough. So one another bad thing is sometimes the uh, the ants if you have scale they'll cut off the lemons so you'll never get the fruit. Like I said, so this tree is self-pollinating. It's considered zone eight to 11, but I'd be careful. I'd be more like a nine to 11, unless you want to move it in and out. Um, you could get the harvest like fall, winter. It grows to six to 10 feet tall. Mine's not gonna grow any much bigger than that. It cannot tolerate temperatures below 50. And that's that for uh, the worst tree for zone 8A. So this is the worst tree I own, but I'm just showing you a little bit more of how you know my garden's doing. I have a, a fig tree here in a, in a container and uh, um, I got sick, you know, in August and I, didn't, I wasn't able to water. Everything I have is hand watered and uh, all the leaves fell off the fig tree. But once I started watering it, it's pretty, it's pretty tolerant um, to heat. You know, it just needs to be watered. I'm going to put it in the ground uh, here in a couple, probably in a, in a month or so. Here's uh, my little conifer garden and uh, some have been doing real good and obviously uh, this, uh, baby blue spruce is not looking too good um, most people would take it out by now but i'm gonna leave it a little bit longer it still has some green in the bottom and um you know i'm gonna see if it could go through the winter and and maybe it'll surprise in spring the other ones are they're hanging in there um the blue atlas cedar is doing really good the mugo pine and the juniper juniper do really well in this area so i'm not worried about them 
but uh, this baby blue spruce I think bit the dust so this was a video of the worst tree I own my citrus tree the Mexican thornless lime this could go for most uh, citrus trees anyway botanic Real out see you next time